review the tools that allow us to provide information on past temperatures, starting with the thermometer. We'll start with thermometer records. Thermometers provide a means of direct measurement of air temperature. The record shows average global variations in temperature for the past 150 years. It appears that average temperatures have increased over the last century. Before 1940, the data show a relatively cool period. Modest, 0.5 degrees Celsius global warming substantially increases the risk of extreme weather events. Here is the thermometer record of the last 130 years or so. Notice that the global temperature variability can be due to natural processes internal to the climate system, such as El Nino. It can also be due to natural external forcing, that is, processes external to the climate system that perturb its energy balance such as natural volcanoes, or Pinatumbo in 1991. Here is another view of the thermometer record of the last 130 years or so. Notice that global temperature variability can be due to anthropogenic external forcing, that is, processes external to the climate system that perturb its energy balance such as increased greenhouse gas or aerosol emissions. It is clear that average temperatures have increased over the last century. Let's look at global temperature records obtained from borehole data. Temperatures deep in the ground respond to changes near the surface. For example, a sustained heat wave at the surface will cause warming to propagate slowly downward, taking roughly 100 years for the perturbation to reach a depth of 150 meters. Therefore, the vertical distribution of temperatures in boreholes from drilling operations contain information about past air temperatures. There are thousands of boreholes around the world, and measurements of temperature with depth are compared to predicted subsurface temperatures to infer temperatures. Departures from the expected increase in temperature with depth, or the geothermal gradient, can be interpreted in terms of changes in temperature at the surface in the past, which have slowly diffused downward warming or cooling layers meters below the surface. This approach has the advantage of measuring temperature directly. The disadvantage is that various soils and rocks differ in how they transfer heat and distort the temperature signal from the surface. So the precision of temperature measurement declines rapidly with depth. Here is a global temperature of the last century obtained from borehole data. Borehole data are direct measurements of temperatures from boreholes drilled into the Earth's crust. Again, departures from the expected increase in temperature with depth, or the geothermal gradient, can be interpreted in terms of changes in temperature at the surface in the past, which have slowly diffused downward warming or cooling layers meters below the surface. A majority of the borehole data at the World Data Center are from the University of Michigan's Global Database of Borehole Temperatures and Climate Reconstructions. Let's look at global temperature records obtained from glacier length. Quantitative assessments of the size glaciers for the past 400 years are available. Glaciers flow from areas of snow accumulation to
to lower elevations. The dynamics and energy flow of glacier movement and retreat are well understood. A simple relationship exists between glacier length and the average air temperature. Glaciers have fluctuated in historic times and the length of fluctuations of many glaciers are known. In Europe, for example, we know how they have retreated or advanced since 1850 or even earlier. Systematic and precise measurements of glacier area and volume are relatively new. However, the length of a valley glacier is a relatively simple parameter to measure or to infer from sketches, paintings, and early maps. In many cases, moraines and trim lines provide very useful additional information as in the figure below. Again, from different parts of the world, there is a wealth of information on glacier fluctuations. Systematic and precise measurements of glacier area and volume are relatively new. However, the length of a valley glacier is a relatively simple parameter to measure or to infer from sketches, paintings, and early maps. In many cases, moraines and trim lines provide very useful additional information. Here is a picture of the snout of a glacier in Switzerland. The former position of the glacier front has left clear marks in the landscape. Glacier length fluctuations are the product of variations in more than one meteorological parameter. Glacier mass balance depends mainly on air temperature, solar radiation, and precipitation. Experiments on glaciers have shown that the primary source for melt energy is solar radiation, but that fluctuations in the mass balance through the years are mainly due to temperature and precipitation. Here is the reconstructed global mean temperature anomaly. Due to the delayed response of glaciers and the strongly decreasing number of records, temperature cannot be reconstructed for the period after 1990. Let's conclude this brief review with some proxy data. This includes glacial ice, tree growth rings, and more. So where are the proofs of the climate changes going back thousands and millions of years ago that we have described in the previous slides? The problem with accurately assessing climate change is that historical records of most meteorological variables go back at best only 160 years or so, or to about 1850. The length of this record is just too small to describe the range of natural climate variability over thousand and million year periods. Also, the data that we do have are not necessarily consistent, as issues such as changes in instruments, urbanization, and the advent of satellite data complicate the matter significantly. Yet to understand fully the behavior of the atmosphere and to anticipate future climate change, we must somehow discover how climate has changed over broad expanses of time. To overcome the lack of direct measurements, scientists have turned to indirect measurements to reconstruct past climates. Such proxy data come from natural recorders of climate, such as glacial ice, tree growth rings, coral reefs, seafloor sediments, and more. Let's now talk about ice cores. 
Ice cores allow us to reconstruct past climates. Cores taken from Greenland and in Arctic ice sheets have changed our basic understanding of how the climate system works. Scientists collect samples with a drilling rig, like a small version of an oil drill. A hollow shaft follows the drill head into the ice, and ice cores are extracted. Ice cores provide a detailed record of changing air temperatures and snowfall. Air bubbles in the ice record variations in atmospheric composition. Changes in carbon dioxide and methane are linked to fluctuating temperatures. The core information also includes atmospheric fallout, such as windblown dust, volcanic ash, pollen, and modern day pollution. Ice is one of Earth's best record keepers, revealing features of the climate when the ice was deposited. These deep ice cores from Greenland are stored in the main archive of the National Ice Core Laboratory in Denver. Ice cores from Antarctica tell us that the current polar climate is warmer than it has been at any time in the past 250,000 years. Notice the ice ages. Ice core measurements from Antarctica suggest that during the last ice age, about 18,000 years ago, temperatures were 6 degrees colder. Carbon dioxide levels were 30% lower. Methane levels were 50% lower. And hydrogen levels were lower than the current interglacial period. Now let's talk more about tree rings. Every year, trees in temperate regions add a layer of new wood under the bark. Characteristics of each tree ring, such as size and density, reflect the environmental conditions that prevailed during the year when the ring was formed. Favorable growth conditions produce a wide ring. Unfavorable ones produce a narrow ring. Trees growing at the same time in the same region show similar tree ring patterns. Annual tree rings indicate not only tree age. The ring width indicates growth spurts due to warmer temperatures. Dendroclimatology is the science of determining past climates from trees, primarily properties of the annual tree rings. Tree rings are wider when conditions favor growth and narrower when times are difficult. Other properties of the annual rings, such as maximum late wood density, or MXD, have been shown to be better proxies than simple ring width. Using tree rings, scientists have estimated many local climates for hundreds to thousands of years in previous times. By combining multiple tree ring studies, sometimes with other climate proxy records, scientists have estimated past regional and global climates. Here is the global temperature of the past 1,200 years, obtained from tree ring measurements. Next, we are going to talk about coral reefs and other proxy measurements that depend on isotopes. Isotopes are different types of atoms, or nuclides, of the same chemical element, each having a different number of neutrons, or mass. Isotopes differ in mass number, or the number of nucleons, but never in atomic number. For example, 16O, 17O, and 18O. They are 16 oxygen, 17 oxygen, 
and 18 oxygen. The same chemistry, but different masses. Oxygen has three naturally occurring isotopes, 16 oxygen, 17 oxygen, and 18 oxygen, where the 16, 17, and 18 refer to the atomic mass. The most abundant is 16 oxygen, with a small percentage of 18 oxygen, and an even smaller percentage of 17 oxygen. The 18 oxygen by 16 oxygen ratio provides a record of ancient water temperature. Precipitation in glacial ice contain water with a low 18 oxygen content and the 18 oxygen content of oceanic water is high. Let's talk about coral reefs. Here's an illustration of a colorful coral reef. Corals are marine animals that form exoskeletons of calcium carbonate. Colonies of corals produce reefs in clear, shallow waters. These animals generate denser layers in their exoskeletons during months with severe weather and less dense layers during months with more benign weather. As a result, corals develop discernible annual bands that can be counted to establish the age of a sample. Useful information on past climate conditions is gathered by analyzing the changing chemistry of coral reefs with depth. The ratio of heavy to light oxygen isotopes in shells of marine organisms decreases with the temperature of the surrounding seawater. The strontium to calcium ratio in coral skeletons decreases with temperature. Here is the temperature of the past 400 years obtained from coral reef data. Let's talk about sea levels. Global sea levels rise and fall depending on the volume of the ocean basins versus the water in them. Changes in the volume of ocean basins occur over millions of years and are not directly related to climate or plate tectonics. However, changes in water volume may occur relatively rapidly in less than 100,000 years and depend on global temperatures. Seafloor sediments are useful recorders of worldwide climate change because the numbers and types of organisms living near the sea surface change with the climate. Here are reconstructions of global temperatures of the past 1,100 years from several different proxy methods. Notice the conversion of these measurements. It's nice to see that all of these measurements confirm the warming of the last century of our planet. In summary, we have direct measurements of the temperatures based on direct weather observations only from the last 200 years or so. Indirect climate measures or proxies allow us to determine the climate on 1,000 years or more scales. Tree rings provide about 1,000 years before present. Glacial ice cores provide about 250,000 years before present. Ocean sediment cores provide about 1 million years before present. And geology in general provides 1 billion years before present. Now it's time for a quiz. How are past climates known? Here's our answer. 
Climatic reconstruction methods range from direct measurements of past change, such as ground temperature variations, gas content in ice core air bubbles, ocean sediment, poor water change, and glacier extent changes, to proxy measurements involving the change in chemical, physical, and biological parameters that reflect past change in the environment where the proxy carrier grew or existed. It is now well accepted and verified that many organisms, such as trees, corals, oceans, and other organisms, alter their growth in response to changing climate, and that these climate-induced changes are well recorded in the past growth of living and dead specimens or assemblages of organisms. Remember, there is a large selection of iMode Education Lectures, which can further enhance your knowledge of earthquakes, volcanoes, climate, and energy. Thank you for listening to this iMode Education Lecture.